Kumbaza is a historical decentralized industrial area. There were a lot of empty factories. This area has about a 70% unemployment rate. You in Timbaza, we are suffering because most of people are not working, because we're losing jobs, because other factories are gone. Beck Trading is a company that started in 1992. We had a tiny little factory, really making just uh, personal protective clothing. It's not exactly the most cost-effective place to manufacture, but we have this philosophy that where people work together, everything's possible. At that time, I started working here. We were only few, not even 200, because we don't have too much lines at that time. We'd reached kind of a plateau, and we were looking for a retail partner. That retail partner we identified as Builders Warehouse because we thought that we could do a better job with their personal protective clothing. Builders is a hardware retailer that provides goods and services to retail consumers as well as small to medium and large enterprises. If we look at the business in its entirety, we've got a combination of import suppliers as well as local suppliers. We looked at our products and saw the opportunity for us to manufacture products locally. It allowed us to grow local suppliers in terms of manufacturing and providing those very goods that we've imported over a number of years. From having one product listing, we now have 28 products listed with Builders Warehouse. And we've grown our range since then. And today we employ roughly about 1,800 people in two factories. My job here is I'm preparing for my orders for the lines. I'm a supervisor. It's essentially a partnership based on what success looks like for both of our businesses and being their preferred channel to market as far as their product and assortment of items that's on our shelf. Big Trading comfortably supply our 110 stores nationally and across our borders. We have found that they're very open to new ideas. They're very innovative business. Without back trading, nothing. I have my house built with this money for this factory. I mean, a breadwinner for my children, my grandchildren. That's why we're proud. Well, this is an actual fact for everyone. Right. The moment you walk into the door, whether you're a retail customer doing a small DIY project at home, painting a room, or you're a small to medium or large contractor, we're about helping you get it done. And that could range from installation and assembly, selling light to heavy duty industrial equipment, tool hire. It's not about selling core product, but in actual fact, offering them expert advice, saving them time and money, and helping them build a better life or better business. I'm a director of a small company. The company was founded by myself and my husband who passed away last year. We do buildings, road construction. That is our first house that we built. The challenge is when you get a project to start, and you don't have enough capital to start acquiring your material. Because some of the projects you must start by laying out your own money. Our commercial or our key accounts business is centered around small to medium enterprises as well as large contractors. Now, ultimately how we service these customers is about understanding their business, number one, and number two, servicing it accordingly. They opened a credit account for the company, which is also flexible. When I need to source a lot of material, we took our plans to them. They had a consultant. He will start it from the plan and tweak everything and see what we can do and go on site as well. They don't just supply you. They've assisted us a lot. So that growth journey is not a one-sided journey. If our customers grow, ultimately, yes, we grow. But more importantly, it creates an economic opportunity for that customer. 
moving from a small contractor to a medium, and ultimately over a period of time could potentially move to a large property developer. So our partnership with Builders Warehouse started right off the bat when we started PNG Construction. We uh, have been doing from renovations to small builds to big builds to residential developments. When we started Amdani Point Development in 2017, on this project, Builders Warehouse have been a substantial help to us in the way that when we did our first show house, they contributed in getting their suppliers on board um, and doing cost suppliers on the actual build of the house. Our textured wall colors on the external are a specific color for our estate and that's been put together by builders. We're looking at a, a different type of roof tiles that um, is gonna be first world coming to South Africa. So builders are instrumental in all those sort of things. Um, I really feel they have been instrumental in the success of our development. They're just phenomenal. It has helped me grow my business. They don't leave you in a ledge. You know, they've got your interest at heart, your company interest at heart. Massmart acquired Builders Warehouse in 2003, and it was a family-owned business. We now operate in five SADC countries, so it's South Africa, Botswana, Mozambique, Zambia, and Kenya. We've got 110 stores in total, and uh, we've got just over 13,000 team members from the original 435 when we started this journey. Part of our journey in terms of existing stores and opening new stores is essentially to become the store of the community. Our partnership with Hope Worldwide helps us establish that. Hope Worldwide is an international, faith-based, uh, non-government organization. So our focus area um, is mainly um, early childhood development centers. Uh, where we look into supporting preschools to comply with government norms and standards uh, in order to be registered. We are in a, a rural area, in an area called a Lamondi location. The challenge that we, we see in this community is that uh, ECD centers, they are like too far from this area. The kids have to start preschool before they go to the primary we decided to open uh, this building. It was uh, terrible. Uh, it was vandalized. The windows was broken. When the floods came, we got the damage on the ceiling. There was no plumbing. Then we came, we cleaned. We registered the ECD center. A lot of preschools, especially in the areas that we are operating, are not registered, they're not conducive for learning, um, and that they cannot be subsidized until they meet the uh, required norms and standards and they comply. So the need is quite big. I just uh, received a call from uh, the, the ECD chairperson for this uh, municipality. They confirmed to me that Iletukutle Crash was not funded. I said, yes, it's not funded. She said, there's a whole point why do we want to come and assess the building. When we open a store, we engage with Hope Worldwide. They identify the centers, they reach out to us, and we end up supplying them with the goods and materials. They came and they painted the walls inside, outside, with a very nice colors. Uh, they put tiles on the kitchen, plumbing also. We believe that we cannot do this alone. So partnership with corporates like builders has been very vital in ensuring that all this work takes place. Ultimately, we're taking one small step at a time. We're making one small difference at a time with these ECD centers and the impact it's got on children as well as their parents in that area. The main aim is to take these preschools from subsistence to sustainability, where they are able to 
uh, run and get the necessary support as in subsidies from government they can take care of the little ones especially where parents cannot afford to take their children to preschools we also focus on ensuring that the teachers in the preschools are capacitated to know how to uh, teach the children and we graduate that center and move to the next when i opened here i saw the walls like shining the floor was like shining i i don't even know what to do i was like i, I cried actually i cried then yeah you can even see the kids when they, they come, they can feel their safe because they know they're going to sit in a new tables, new chairs, playing with the, with the toys, even the community. Wherever we go, they talk about this crash. Uh, they talk about this building. It looks very, very nice. Traditional financing tended not to incorporate the elements of sustainable development. It doesn't make sense to deliver an infrastructure project to a community without taking into account the gender, environmental and social aspects. This is lovely. Wow. Look at this. Nature is very beautiful and has so many benefits. We need to protect it, ultimately, not just for now, but also for future generations. In this catchment that we're in at the moment, the Amgani, our dams hold about 800 million cubic meters of water. The soil in this catchment holds about 1.6 billion cubic meters of water. So the value of these natural ecosystems with intact soil, intact land cover are absolutely critical to our water security. So what we really need to do is conserve as much of the land as possible. So what do we do where people do need a place to stay, but there is a water system nearby? The critical thing is that the infrastructure that we put in place are built correctly and are maintained adequately. We're basically here to visit some of the projects that we're financing to spread the importance of mainstreaming biodiversity and encouraging environmental and social sustainability. The DBSA works closely with the municipalities and other partners such as government, the private sector, NGOs and academics to deliver infrastructure projects that incorporate the gender, social and environmental aspects so that our projects can be sustainable and they can remain relevant, just improving the livelihoods of the communities in those areas, but doing it in such a way that the integrity of nature is preserved. I'm from Eastern Cape and Lape Deben. At the Ben, the Seclair Estate, the Guaman Sud. We are living there together. In our rural areas, we don't just throw the rubbish anyway. And here in Deben, we just throw it. And not knowing what was it, the AP in Pakistan is I'm fully. I'm magic. I'm right. Right, ma'am. How many times do you see AP there? There was a kid, she wanted some people to be the part of what she's going to be doing in the settlement. I just volunteered myself. Communities are the direct beneficiaries of the services that ecological infrastructure provides. If the environment is unhealthy or unwell, and it yields poor services. It's those vulnerable communities that are most at risk. Part of the Palmeet Ecological Infrastructure Project entailed capacitating and employing people from informal settlements within or in close proximity to the catchment. And through our EnviroChap program, they've gone through a whole series of training exercises, helping them to understand the natural environment, see the harm that's being done, 
and how that influences them from a negative point of view and how it could influence them from a positive point of view. We do illegal stamp cleaning. We do door-to-door -door teaching people on how to keep the environment clean. Mondays, we go and do biomonitoring. The lead funding agency was the DBSA, and that enabled the Palmeet project to receive funding to continue with rehabilitation work in the Palmeet catchment. We are in the Palmeet Nature Reserve, so we now have this nice green corridor which we see on either side. It offers those services that have elsewhere been lost because of development encroachment. Things like purification of the water just by plants being present. The plants are able to uptake and trap some of the pollutants. But that's what's nice about the nature reserve. I mean, I know the water's polluted, but at least the habitat is rich. Wow. Whereas up by the factories and stuff, or down by the other end, there's too many houses, too much pollution. The houses are like right on the river, or the factories are right on the river. At least the habitat is good here. It gives them a chance. By protecting natural spaces, we are actually letting nature do its job. When the natural infrastructure works properly, it also actually helps bring down our cost of funding. Remember that our rivers, you know, they're passing through these industries. There's a lot of industrial uh, pollution, the spillages, and then also the issue of waste. You know, waste is quite a, a huge uh, challenge. You know, it's piled so much pressure on our infrastructure. There's a lot of pollution leading into the dam and probably the entire water system. Where's it coming from? The majority of this water is coming from a sewer system in Mpopomeni that is not actually working. This is effectively slightly diluted sewage that is coming down and entering into Midmar Dam. Amgani catchment services around 5 million people. It's critically important. The issue is one of very, very high pollution levels as a consequence of poor maintenance and management of a sanitation system. It's not all bad news. There are increasing areas under conservation and under biodiversity protection. I'm from KZN, born and bred. I did not think we'd ever get to this point where the water is so polluted. It is a wake-up call for us young people to make sure that we are involved in ensuring environmental sustainability. We started working in Bokomeni as the Umgeni Ecological Infrastructure Partnership yeah. to basically look after the Umgeni catchment from source to sea. Mm. We look at the entire catchment as a very integrated socio-ecological system. Where we were today in Bokomeni, in between the sewage treatment works and the dam, is a very vast wetland because the wastewater treatment works in Bokomeni wasn't working. The wetland itself was getting degraded. We could not just refurbish a wastewater treatment works and leave the wetland because the wetland supplements the wastewater treatment works. If you rehabilitate a wetland, the biodiversity in that wetland will improve and your wetland will be functional. The function of the wetland is purification. For the actual rehabilitation, we had an engagement with the community trust that owns this land. But now one of the issues that we have, obviously, is, is livestock, as you can see, that's grazing on the wetland. So it's not only environmental issues, but also there's a lot of social dynamics as well. We don't just um, look at the you know, ecological aspects of things. We also look at the social aspects. Hence, we have to engage um, the trust and the community in terms of the importance of this wetland for water security. We really do try and involve people and ensure that communities understand the work that we do. We've been knocking on their doors and teaching them that we only have 1% fresh water. We don't have another earth. What is happening on the society is affecting the nature. My specific role within the city is to coordinate the climate change research. In Deben, we see a lot of extreme weather events. There's a lot of flooding taking place. We all came here to look for the job, to look for the better way of life. I was looking for something that will be mine so that I can stay peacefully. Dense vegetation helps to slow down flood waters. The Quarry Road informal settlement, you've got a community living right on the water's edge. They're at risk there because they don't have this natural barrier. It was two o'clock that Ptolemy said, we WhatsApp group, 
a WhatsApp group layer early warning system. It drainage, it was already blocked. Then there was a lot of water on the road. And I saw Smiso on the bridge and he was checking what is happening on Quarry Road. Then I went to my house. I kept sending these messages. Please stay awake, don't sleep. The channel of the water changed and came to our entrance. There was sound of that water. I hear people talking outside. Leave everything, come out. Then I, I knocked to my neighbor. I said, you guys are still here, come out. And we noticed while we were walking, this water can take you. I said, let's just hold each other and form a human chain. But look at the damage. This is what we talk about, the extreme weather events, which are likely to affect our situation is bad. They told me that your house, it was all gone. It's like they have never been any houses there. A key element of a just transition is ensuring that we support projects that mitigate against the impact of climate change and also adapt and become more resilient to the shocks that are brought about by climate change. About 350 of the structures in the informal settlement got washed away. Because of our community-based flood early warning system, not a single life was lost due to the flood. This is not just about the trees, you know, it's about the whole system, how it's worked together with supporting the built infrastructure. So now we are starting to see their perspective changing, you know, especially with the recent floods. They now understand that these systems need to be maintained. Otherwise, if they are not maintained, you know, we know what will happen. Our mission at the DBSA is to build Africa's prosperity using our financial and non-financial resources in partnership with our stakeholders who promote the just transition to create a sustainable, low-carbon, resilient and inclusive society. There is always hope. We are here, we are hope. In fact, the young minds are hope. So it's very critical for us to be in these spaces also to make a difference.